All right, we run. Welcome to the Thursday night, the Kutumaran Shir. We are in Tere uh, Hafalov still. We have basically concluded Sif Zain and we're into Sorolak Sif Chet. So basically what we said before, after we explained that when a person sanctifies his seven candles, which is his mouth, his nose, his eyes, and his ears, he said that the Shefa Eloki, Ruach HaKodesh, which is a Ruach of Chochmah, spirit of wisdom, that emanates from Kodesh, which is also called Pnei Amenoira. It's called Atika Kadisho. Many different names to that concept. So he said that this Shef Eloki will enter his mind. And it will turn from a Pchinas Makif to Pnimi, from an, a Seichel, which is, you know, it, it belongs to you, but it's still out of reach. It's still not in. As, as probably the best word to use is you still, I mean, <laughs> the euphemism is not meant for this, but literally you cannot, you, you can't yet wrap your mind around it. In other words, you don't have, you don't have the, the, your faculties cannot contain and define, therefore understand the, that seichon. That's called a makif. Pnimi is when the seichel is inside, it's within your faculties, you understand it, you can, you can wrap your mind around it, as it were. It's a very, you know, it's a funny expression to use, but it's, 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 it's a good expression to use because, you know, it's, 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 that's what it is. Instead of, of the wisdom wrapping your mind, your mind needs to wrap the wisdom. The makif is when the wisdom is wrapping around your mind and does not come in. And when a person is bringing Pchinas Makif to Pnimi, then he merits that his heart burns always to Kodesh Baruch. And he is to speak new Diburim of Hashem is Baruch. And these Diburim, that a person is Echad, new Diburim, is Racha Kodesh. Rabbeinu says that which a person is Echad, to speak new Diburim from HaKadosh Baruch is Racha Kodesh. Kodesh Baruch is giving him the Diburim. And we also said that through the mitzvah, Sukkah, which is another set of seven, which is the seven on the covet, and the Racha Kodesh, which is parallel to the Makif. So through the mitzvah of Sukkah, you have to this Shefa Loki. And this Shefa Loki is coming from Bechina of Or upon him. And this is also Bechina of Kiddushin, the Chopa. This is where you get the Or Makif. Chopa is, is a symbol for Or Makif. And the seven candles is represented here with the seven days of festivity. You know, Shema Brachos, the seven days of Shema Mishta. This is how you get the Makif inside. Lahavdil, Laleinu, and Prinas Shiva Sima seven days of mourning. Then that, that seven elevates the Neshama to the Orapon. Because while a Yid is alive, he is contributing the flow of Orapon into this world by his very being. 
and we spoke about it at length. That, you know, if the, uh, I once said, I mean, it's not really precise, but I once said that if you want to know who is a Jew, that was the whole question, who is a Jew, who isn't a Jew, whatever. So you have to ask Hitler, you know, the, the definition of a Jew is, is very broad. And we said that a Jew reminds the Gentile that there's no, there's no point in his existence. It's pointless. The existence of a goy, unless he is actually serving the Jew, like a body that is serving the head, is the existence is pointless. What are you going to do with a body without a head? Yeah, I mean, every single organ and limb of that body has its own head. But it's, it's, it's a particular head. It's a specific small time head. It is just, just to make, to enable that limb to exist. But it all has to be bottled to the actual head. That's why it is said in the future, and kings will be your nannies, and queens will be your nursemaids. On the face of it, it sounds like, do you know how cool we are in the future? the people are the most important there will be our servants. There's another place that says that a person who's walking, is going around with tzitzis, the Osset lover is going to have 70, 70 um, shamshim, 70 slaves for every corner of the tzitzis. So altogether it's four times 70. Question is like, when you look at it from afar, it looks racist, I don't know, or it looks like megalomaniac, megalomaniac, you know, like, who the heck do you think you are, kind of? But the truth that it's not that at all. The Metzius of a Gentile without a Jew is pointless. So when a Gentile sees a Jew or when a secular Jew sees somebody who is Shaitar Mitzvahs, They feel there's, there's a quagmire there. They feel a tremendous stench. Something is very wrong. Something is rotten, something stinks. And very much like, you know, a smoker, people who smoke cigarettes, they don't realize the smell that is coming out of them. If somebody who is smoking is just coming in to a room and he just finished a cigarette, you can tell immediately there's like, he's like wrapped around in a noxious cloud of stench of his smoking. And the smoker is totally unaware of that. 
because it's him. And when you tell him you just smoke a cigarette, he says, how did you know? <laughs> how do you know? You stink to high heaven. I remember when I was a smoker, my wife told me, listen, you got to stay outside for 20 minutes before you come into the house. So many times I used to just smoke a cigarette and just throw it out. I figured she'll, you know, she, she won't notice. Boy, did she. How does she know? It's so amazing. It's so amazing, you stupid head. <laughs> You're walking around with this <laughs> cloud of stench. And you're wondering, but you can't, the same thing when a Gentile sees a Jew or when a, a fried Jew sees uh, uh, a, re a religious Jew, Kalvachome Haredi Jew. They don't know what it is that they see, but what they see is that their own existence is pointless. It's very common, it's very common By, by people who are who are not religious, to have great great difficulties, whenever it is that they hear lo leno, that somebody from their friends or whatever it is, is is has a, a, a disastrous illness, lo leno v'lalechem, they can't talk to them. They can't go to visit them. I don't know if you have ever, ever saw this phenomena. They can't go to visit them. They can't talk to them. It's, live, it's as if they are alive, already cut off from society. And the reason is, they, yes, they are cut off from the pointless structure of imaginary existence that you have built yourself. That's it, that's the tachlis. And this they can't face. So they have a choice. Either they go against you with everything they got, or they become Jewish, either or. Truth be told that the Gentiles don't need to become Jewish. They were not made Jewish, and their tachlis is to be to keep Sheva Mrs. Ben Noyach. I told the story more than once. Uh, I'll tell it again. In one of the trips to Uman uh, many years ago, I don't know. Must have been uh, ba, 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 ba. it was twenty five or twenty six years ago. I went with my son. Today he's thirty one. He just turned thirty one. He was six years old. So. And I only took him on that particular trip. At that time, the trip to Uman, it, there was a, a, you know, a two-lane road, basically a one lane, you know, one lane going each direction. A rickety road, the trip to Uman used to take four or five hours from Kiev. And we landed and we landed in Kiev or we landed in Odessa. I don't remember. But the thing is that, you know, I had this big suitcase, you know, one big suitcase plus a big duffel bag. And I took my son. And as we came out, you know, from customs or whatever it is, we came out, there stood a whole group of... Uh, people, Gentiles, from Finland and from Germany and from various countries, and they they came over and they said, "Can I please carry a suitcase?" And they came 
and they carried our suitcases. And they took us, I mean, the buses that we were going to were thinking, you know, of, of diesel fuel, of cigarette smoke and diesel fuel. They took us to this brand new, you know, bus, you know, that was like, look almost like a, like a spaceship. And they loaded up to the bus and they put up the, me and my son. And so I asked them, who are you? What is this? So they told me that they belong to a certain sect of Goyim who believe in the Nevoah that of that particular Nevoah that in the days of the redemption the 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 kings will be your nannies your babysitters and the queens will be your nursemaids that it is the role of the gentile to carry the jews to Eretz Israel to serve the jews And so they said, in order to bring about the, the, uh, the fruition of, of, of that prophecy, they were already helping the Jews, it was by serving the Jews, you know, to make the Nevoah come true. And I want to tell you something. these Gentiles were glowing. They were glowing. They were so happy. You can not begin to imagine how happy they are. They were. It was like, and he, he took care of, when he took care of my son, and he brought me, what did, the whole thing was like, and the bus itself, the driver, he said they played some some Israeli songs. They thought maybe they were like that. And and all the way, it drove us just it was unbelievable. I have never ever in my life seen happier people. Why? Because they were uh, being Mekayan. They're tachlas. They were living it. By a goy is very simple. A Jew has 613 parts to his neshama and nefesh roch neshama chayichida, just endless, endless, endless. So a Jew is always conflicted. He's always filled with yes, but, and this and that and whatever it is. By a goy is very simple. You give him a Muna, boom, he runs with it. That's it. He doesn't need anything else. He's fine. He's flying. He is fulfill, he's fulfilling his tachos. But if he doesn't, he has to guard against you because you're very, the very mitzios of a Jew stares the fantasy. It kills the fantasy. You know, the suspension of disbelief, let's make believe that, 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 you know, being a movie star is important or having a lot of money is important. All these things, it's a dimian, it's just a fantasy. When you give him the, 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 the when they see a Jew, it punctures it. It, it, it exposes the pointlessness of their existence. So it's true, yeah, they're, they're smelling something rotten, but they fail to realize that it is they who are, it's their own pointlessness. It's a stench of their own pointlessness that they're smelling. So a nifter, you know, a Jew lived in this world. When he leaves this world, the light, the aura upon him that he brought down to the world that the world is not pointless, that there is a point to this world, there is a goal to this world, is taken away. 
So it is the tsar of those that, that, that love him that elevates his neshama to orapanim. The orapanim is the shayrish of the neshama of a Jew. And he says the same thing that a person who was born without sons and there's no, he, he doesn't have anybody to bring about the mamshich door upon him in the world. So over there, there's a union of Yibam and Chalitza. His brother is supposed to marry his widow if he's born without any children, without, without, without uh, issues, without offsprings. So the Yibam and Chalitza is the tikkun for that. Because a neshama that leaves this world without at least trying to have children cannot get back to its shoresh. So the, the best tikkun, which is also a, a tremendous oinesh, is yibum. Why? Because then the, the person who is born is that nifter. So essentially, his wife has become his mother. And that's why that child of Yibum is, is in a very dire straits because he cannot find his, his Shidduch because his Shidduch is his mother. Unless, as Rabbeinu says, unless you know, he has Rachamim Rabim. The Rachamim Rabim is that light of our opponent. The special Rachamim God is Baruch that he should also have a light. And we say, and if the brother does not want to marry his, his ex-sister-in-law, then there's Chalitza. Chalitza, then there's, she's supposed to spit in his face. It's a very, you know, in front of him. It's a very big, big, big Indian. And it's a very deep Indian. Because we said that, that when a person marries a wife, the first time, you know, that they are together, the per, that the, the husband uh, imbues, injects his wife with a ruach. And that ruach stays with her. And throughout all the children, the bulk of the ruach comes up out in the firstborn, the Bechor, which is why the Bechor gets twice uh, the, the, the portions in the Yerusha. And that's the reason why if they did not have any children, there's a need for Yibo and Chalitza. Because that spirit that her husband planted in her is still there. It's a spiritual union. And it does not leave her. So that means that her husband, and the sea is is still tied to her. He cannot go back to her upon him. So Kodesh Baruch Hu made a tikkun, you know something? Let the nifta come out as the child of that woman. Like this, you will be separated from her. And you'll actually have a body. And what happens if the, his brother doesn't want to do it? His brother doesn't want to do it, so there's another tikkun. That what the wife has to spit in his face, to take off his shoe and to spit in his face in front of him. And Rabbeinu says that in that spit, sometimes you can see the face of the deceased. 
the reason for it is because in the spit, the mouth itself is a very intricate mechanism. And the five, the five parts of speech interact with each other. And I'm not sure if it's the tongue and the roof of the mouth or the tongue of the, I'm not exactly sure which parts do it, but their interaction is the equivalent of, of, of a conjugation, of a coming together. One is male, one is female. And the, the, the result of this is in the spit. It might be the tongue and the teeth. When you wrap your, your tongue you know, around your teeth, from the inside, from the outside, your mouth gets filled with spit. So in her spit, when he is doing that, she's doing the chalitza, the spirit that her husband has implanted in her, a deceased husband, is being cloaked in the spit, spit itself. When she spits it out, her husband separates from her. And now the thing is the spitting in the face is a tremendous busha. Tremendous busha. The busha here is acting as a tikkun. Like the tsar of the Sheba Shiva Samehavelus, the, 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 the busha of the one who doesn't want to be Miyabim, his brother's wife, that's the thing that enables the brother to separate from his wife. And the same thing we says the the of the Oynish of Yibum is the reason when 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 Aaron Cohen says about Miriam, who spoke about Moshe Rabbeinu, that he says, make sure that she doesn't become that she isn't punished in the punished, and he uses a very specific language. She became leper. She became a leper. He says, Al Natiyi. Let her not be like somebody who is dead. That when he comes out of the womb of his mother, and half his flesh is consumed. And Rebbe explains he is talking about here the oinish of Yibum. What is Anish of Yibum? When, when, as Sefer Tzir says, there's nothing higher than Oinig, than pleasure. And there's nothing lower than Nega, which is leprosy. It's the same letters, it's just a different configuration. Nega and Oinig is the same letters. One is the highest because this world was created for pleasure. It's up to you to decide, do you want this worldly pleasure? Or do you want as the son of You have to forgo this world pleasure in order to get the true pleasure, the endless pleasure. That's why the Shiva Saneris don't talk falsely. Don't look, we're not supposed to. This is how you're pushing the pleasures of Oilam Azeh and you're zeichet to pleasures of Oilam Abba. So the, 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 somebody who has a negal, a leopard, this is like the lowest of the low, the tremendous busha. And it is that busha that enables the, the, the ultimately to turn in to or upon him, to be mamshich or upon him. So either the brother has the busha, and he says that 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 when there is yibum, what happens? Kames, because this is metzer choshev kames. Somebody who is a leper is considered as if he's dead. I mean, there are a few people who are considered as dead. A person who is poor, a person who is blind, and so on. 
in in a mitzvah, in somebody who was who was who was, who was a leper. And it, and from all of them, the mitzvah is the one. Not only that he is considered as if dead. He says the mitzvah she has to be outside alone, outside. If he's walking in the street, he has to grow his hair and grow his mustache and tell everybody, don't come close to me, I'm Tomadik. He has to go sit outside of the machna, he has to sit outside, to go outside out, alone for seven days. Completely alone for, why seven, seven days? Says Shiva Saneris. This is poigim by upon him. So Alati Kameis, let him not be like somebody who is dead, who is a mitzvah. Then we're talking about the husband who died without children. When he comes out from the womb of his mother, which means his wife that now becomes his mother, and half is his flesh is consumed. Because being that his wife is now his mother, he has no zivug. We know that a person who is alone is called plaguf, is half a body. He's coming out destined to be half a body forever. Everything ties here together. And now we also we go we got into this Indian that sometimes the Moichin and the Shefa Loki is locked. You can access it. Usually, or when it's accessible, when the makifim accessible, the only thing you need to do is you need to be mekadosh. You sanctify the seven candles, and with this you bring in the shefa loki, and that inflames the heart. The heart gets excited. You don't need any service to be You just you're flying. You're flying. So Rav Nelson, as we'll see, Rav Nelson writes at the very end that the, the right order of, you know, development of this Torah really should be what we're learning, what we learned in Siv Zayin should be in the first. That sometimes the Shefa is locked. It's called the Ibor. Like a, like, like, like a pregnant woman that the, 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 you see the, the belly gets big, but you don't see no baby. And so they have, there's a, even a makif doesn't exist yet. The makif itself is only in potential, a pregnancy. Then you have to scream out in Torah and in Tefillah, like a Yoledis, a woman who gives birth, that she has to scream 70 voices, and then she gives birth. And that opens up that opens up the Yama Chochma, the sea of Chochma. And then there's birth. And every single one of us, for every single birth that we experience, and when you are getting into Abayi Hashem, when you decide that you're tackling this, you are going from one birth to another. You have to cry out 70 voices in order to bring from Ibor, from pregnancy, to a state of Makif. So first of all, the Makif has to be born. Once the Makif is born, then you sanctify the seven counts, you bring it in. That's the proper order of how the Torah goes. Rabbeinu chose, first of all, to put the second part, seven candles, and now Rabbi says, sometimes the motion are locked away. They're hidden, and you need crying, 70 cries, in order for these motion to be born. So now we're starting with Seif Ches. This is where we're holding now. When a person learns Torah, then maybe Bashum Khidush and does not understand in the story no Khidush. Zemikmasha Moichin Vasekhatura Vehalimudaze. 
That's because the level of intelligence, of wisdom, of that particular learning that you're learning, that subject you're learning, and we have Ibor, it is in a state of gestation by the Shechina. That's why you can access this motion, you can this, 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 this mentality, you, you can reach it. It's concealed like a baby in, in a mother's womb. And that state, this unfinished, this embryonic state of Torah, that you can't get the Moichen, Ze Nikra B'Shem Yaakov. This is called Yaakov. Ki Yaakov is a Pchinas Ibor. Yaakov is a euphemism to a Bechina of Ibor. Bechinas, why does Yaakov is called Yaakov? Bechinas, what he says, Babeten Akav Esochiv. In his mother's womb, he healed his brother. He held on to the heel of his brother. There's a very, very deep Indian to Yaakov holding the okave, the heel of Esau. Because Esau got the prime mission. He was the Bechor. Ariza says he got it as, 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 as a Gilgul from Kain. Kain and, and, and Hevel. Kain was the Bechor also. And he got it, and he got it, and, and this exists, that, that Bechor that, that Esau got from Kain is the lowest point and exists in his okay, because in his heel. That's so why Yaakov grabbed onto the heel. In order to grab the Bechor, to grab that 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 tikkun that nitzis. And you see where where does Yaakov get his name? He get his name. He gets his name Yaakov because he held the heel of his brother when in the in his mother's womb, in a state of gestation, and a state of potentials that still didn't come out. It's before they came out. Yaakov is before it comes out, before it's being revealed. Then you have to call out the voices, the 70 voices. Those 70 voices, the Pchinas Akol Kol Yaakov. The Kol, that 70 voices, is the voice of Yaakov. Meaning, Shehu Bivchinas Yaakov, when you are holding in the Yaakov state, in other words, you're an Ibor. In other words, your brain is in a fog and you can access the intelligence which is hidden in the Torah that you're learning. Or that Philip chanted Calling, You need these voices. You need to cry out. So you can extract the mentality, the, the, the intelligence, the moichin, and so it will become a birth. And then the moichin of Divir Torah, they become a makif. They're no longer concealed, and now they become a makif. It's, it's still not in. You, can, you still cannot wrap your mind around that mentality, but it's accessible. It's wrapping your mind. If you're Makala Shiva Saneris, you'll bring it in. Rabbeinu says, Umisha Terosa Belo Avono Bashum Chidus. Now, when you learn Torah and you don't understand anything, any Chidus, there's, none, there's nothing new in there. In other words, you're not getting any from the in, inner Moichen. It doesn't enrich you that way because you don't have this Moichen as a Makif. It's only an Ewer by the Shechina. Because when you already have it as a makif, there's excitement in your limo. There's excitement in your Torah. There's excitement in your tefillah. This is what you get from the makif. Because the makif says that something tells you already, even though you don't know it, even though you don't, you don't get it inside, you already, you already know, you can smell there's something great going to come. 
you know, like you feel, wow, I, I feel it in my bones, something great is going to, that Chiddush comes from the, when the makif is exposed, as it were. Pchina Siakov, it's not exposed. So when somebody is Torah, there's no understanding of, of any Chiddush, and Lidros Oisa Bera Larabim, don't dash in this Torah to the people, to the masses. That Torah, the Torah that you're trying to see, is still in the in the Pchina of Yaakov, the Pchina Sibor. That doesn't make it worthless. Kodesh Baruch Hu enjoys it a great deal. In the Shir Hashim, it says, in, in his flag, for me, is pure love. Chazal says, don't read the word digloi as a flag, but liglugoi. Liglugoi means a jeer, a joke. Now, that person does not, does not understand what he's learning. Either he understands a very superficial understanding, or he doesn't understand at all. And so liglugoi means that he's, he's mumbling the words, he can't even say the words right. Push it, his learning is a joke for people. Not for Kodesh Baruch Hu. Kodesh Baruch Hu loves it. You know, even a baby who doesn't read the Torah properly, Kodesh Baruch Hu loves his limud, Kodesh Baruch Hu loves his learning, and he enjoys it. Same thing when a person is learning, and he doesn't, he doesn't say any chiddush in what he's learning, Kodesh Baruch Hu enjoys his learning. However, don't teach the story to the rabbin. Don't darshan, don't teach except things that are totally clear, that are totally understandable. Gemal as Chazal said, Nasech Shabbos, Emol Lachochma Achosia said, Tell the wisdom, you're my sister. What does the Chochma have to do with sister? So Chazal say, Im Bolecha Dover, if your particular thing that you're learning, is so clear to you, like your sister is forbidden to you. You can marry a sister. Emar, tell the story. It's totally clear. We love Altamrel. If you don't say, I mean, if it's not that clear, don't say it out. Don't talk about it. Don't say Barabim. It's a big Indian of the Indian of the sister, Dafko. And he says, Val Tom Rev, Zavaki Yaakov, Bechar Loka. Yaakov is, was, is chosen by whom? Who prefers Yaakov? Yud K. It's a Kodesh Baruch, the higher Bechin of a Kodesh Baruch. It's not Vav K of this world. So when your Torah is a Bechinus Yaakov, Bechinus Ibor, you really don't understand what you're learning. You can't even say the words properly. In other words, you're learning without without understanding, without in, in, in the, the mentality of it. Who takes it for himself? That's the Yudke. The Yaakov, the 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 not fully ripe. It's for Kaddish Baruch, Kaddish Baruch loves it. But don't teach it to the rabbi. Aval Israel, when you get to a level of Israel, Yaakov is the embryonic stage. Israel is after the birth. After the birth is Oisius Li Roish. Akev is the lowest, the heel is the lowest part of the body. Israel become Li Roish, that's become the head, that's the highest part of the body. That's full fruition. Now you know, now you're massing the Torah. 
אה, ישראל? ישראל יש גולו עשוי. When you may, ישראל זה אוי לי ראש. In other words, you have to say that it's God of Now the Mechim was revealed to you. It becomes my keeping to your head, into your mind. And you have to understand a little bit. And the Mechad is some kind of a Chiddush. And after you, the Mechad is seven candles, you can bring it in. You also have to say that it's your opponent. Then you can bring in your opponent. Shef Eloki into your Pnimi. You're able to wrap up your mind around this Shef Eloki. You're making the Makif Pnimi. And now, once you do that, then you really, really understand the term. Then you can be dash and chidush in this term. Ebchines Yisrael, now Ebchines Yisrael, then it says about Yisrael asher b'cha espoar, Yisrael, which I will glorify in you. B'cha, in you. Not around you, but inside you. B'cha, in you I will glorify. Shismashecha teres tiferes, the makifim, that that glowing seichel of light or eloki, the makifim will be becha, will be inside. You'll be able to wrap your mind around them. You'll, be, you'll get it. You'll have it. It'll be in your pocket, as they say. Torah pnimius. This, lesgulosui, this you can be, you can reveal to Am Yisrael. Am Yisrael is called Am Segula. Am Segula, it's a Maridika thing. Am Yisrael is Am Segula. Segula is something that cannot be explained. When we say something, is Segula for that. It is impossible to understand why one thing will be auspicious to something else which has no connection with. Like Parshas B'Shalach. So they say B'Shem Nachem Rimnevel that on Tuesday, Parshas B'Shalach, you should say Parshas Saman, it's Gula Leparnosa. What, how did one get to another? This is Gula for that. Sgula is a supernatural quality that something has that you cannot wrap your mind around it. This is what a Jew is. When you see a Jew walking in the street, you think that all you're seeing is just a person, but it's not true. You are seeing a full-fledged menorah. You're seeing a chef Eloki clothed in flesh, in blood, in sinews, in bones. It looks just like any other human being in the world, but it's totally different matter. It's a segula. The whole union of chef Eloki is beyond the sechel. It's a segula. So if you are zoiche to a sgula, you are zoiche to shef eloki, you are zoiche to our opponent, you are zoiche to ruach hakodesh, you are zoiche to pull in the makifin inside. You cried out, the makifin were born, and then you mekadesh your seven candles, and you brought it in. What you have inside you is a sgula. It's unnatural. It's supernatural. You don't need to learn it in. Grinding, you understand it in one fell swoop. That's a sagula. It doesn't make any sense. It's above, it's unnatural. It's supernatural. Ah, you got the sagula. It's only right that you should reveal it to Am Sagula, to a nation whose entire existence is sagula, is, is supernatural. And Rabbeinu says, is the Yoshev. To reveal it to Am Segula. Because the Sechel Pchinas Ocher, the avoidance that you, that you do, is Pchinas Yoshe. You are aimed, you are focused, you are hell bent, as they say, to bring in the Makifanin. 
You're not looking to one side, you're looking to that side, you're not looking to enjoy in the meantime a steak filet or, or whatever. You, you, that, that's not the point. You are focused on bringing in the makifim. That is Yosher. Yosher is a kav, it's a line, and any line has a beginning and an end. That's Olamazah Desech Pchinas Ochor, is a line. One thing after another, after another, after another, it's a line. You are lined up to the Makifin. Makifin is a circle. To bring Makifin in. Ad Khan, Bezat Hashem, we finished Siv Ches, Bezat Hashem. We will continue uh, next week. Hopefully, we'll already be able to do this, you know, this double shear that we'll be able to have it in the breast of the Smedrash. Uh, we may, we'll see if we can do it actually at nine, a little bit later, because I have Harusa between eight and nine. So we'll find a solution. We also have to find a solution for the popcorn problem, right? Because people eat popcorn, you know, <laughs> they'll have a crackling sign on how the recording will come out. So as we said, one possibility is to bring chickpeas, albus, you know, that, you know, people will eat albus and it won't make, uh, won't make noise. We'll see.